given that the previous tank that we reviewed within this series of uh, gifted tanks that we're doing, uh, we're looking at, of course, the Inferno Chimera and whether or not it can uh, really be top dog out of the bunch of tanks that we got for free, of course, being the ones on screen right now, the Bog Horror, the Inferno, the Bellerathon, and the Wraith. And of course, hopefully we can see whether we can get some decent gameplays, unlike in the Bog Horror, where I genuinely think I'd rather call it the Dog Horror. Anyway, moving forward with this video, the Inferno Chimera, and what is special about the tank well, it is a medium tank at tier 8 with 440 alpha damage. If you compare that to some of the highest alpha damage kind of non-TDs without huge cannons, uh, well, this is one of the top dogs. It's got 440, which is similar to things like the Defender, which also has 440. Things like the Hydra IS-6, which you can pick up as part of the deals at the moment. Uh, so it's similar to all of those, except this is a medium tank. This is one that can go 50 kilometers an hour forward with 422 meters vision range uh, with some of the improvements that we have got on the tank. However, However, what we do need to do is factor in the statistics and we'll look through those now. So what does the tank kind of offer in regards to its firepower, its movement, its armor and everything like that? Well, you'll be pleasantly surprised that the tank can go 50 kilometers an hour forward, 20 backwards, which means that it's fairly mobile. You'll also be pretty presently surprised with the actual accuracy of the main armament being 0.37, which is actually more than I thought it was going to be, considering this is a derpier gun than some of the medium tanks that you're probably more likely with uh, that have like those 240 or 320 alpha damage. So... The one problem that you will face with this tank is of course that 2.8 second aim time which is actually probably reduced from down uh, to about 3 seconds so it's gone down to 2.78. Uh, so I would expect that you'd probably be looking uh, pretty knackering to be honest with you uh, if you were trying to play this a stock or without any equipment or without any commander you definitely want to put on some of those ones that are going to reduce the aiming time to be able to push out that damage um, consistently because of course you want to be fully aimed when you're firing every single time on World of Tanks and so if you aren't then you're going to be at a significant disadvantage so make sure you put all the accuracy perks on this tank uh, and all of the equipment such as the vertical stabilizers that you can on this uh, on this one anyway with regards to how it will perform 4.98 rounds per minute is actually not awful for this tank it means that you'll have 2200 dpm with the current setup of course we'll look at that current setup because although we're talking about it these aren't the base values that you can get with the tank we have gone with improved ventilation advanced loader and gun stabilizer so all of those giving the relevant boost 20 percent to accuracy 10 percent to loading time and five percent to crew performance which means basically everything's improved by about 5%. So that means that, yes, the tank has significantly been buffed in terms of the st base stats of the tank. So take that with a pinch of salt. These are pretty much what you're going to get if you kit out your tank as we have. So with the penetration values that we've got, 202 at tier 8 is pretty mediocre. Let's not beat around the bush. You probably going to struggle against some of those tier 10s that you come up against especially some of the high tier um, and the high armored uh, heavily armored things like the type 4 the type 5 you're going to really struggle with those because even your premium rounds aren't good enough to reliably go through some of the frontal weak points of those tanks and that's at the uh, nicest angles that you'll see on those tanks so yeah it's going to be a bit of a problem you want to make sure you get around behind them and hopefully use that mobility to the best of your ability as far as the other things, 440 Alpha is just superb. You can out-trade a lot of the heavy tanks at tier 8 if you get in a tier 8 matchup. Um, yeah, I think that that's always a good thing. And of course, the vision range isn't awful. 422.5 with the base, uh, with the upgrades. Of course, you could go with um, essentially some of the extras like the advanced optics to boost up that further, but you'd have to trade off one of the things. And I think if I was going to trade off anything, 
maybe just take the hit to the loader to be honest because I think the improved ventilation and that boost to your uh, crew performance and in terms of accuracy and stuff is going to be really beneficial in this tank uh, because you want to make sure you are being consistent um, so maybe swap out advanced loader for optics but to be honest I would just run this setup like we've got here because you're probably not going to be that aggressive in this tank. Now Moving on, what else do we have with this tank? Well, the armor model is actually not bad in the Chimera because it gets a absolute boat ton of spaced armor on the front of it. You can see that the mantler of the tank is, of course, a lot of spaced. You've got a big, big slap of 50 millimeter thick mantler that you can basically try and uh, avoid getting hit with. Of course, the horns also count as spaced armor, so don't go shooting through those if you're an opponent looking to penetrate the chimera. Of course, just hit the flat bit of the side. Uh, you've also got these nice side skirts which avoid heat rounds coming into the side when you're side scraping. The one thing that you do have to note is that actually when side scraping you do have uh, 50.8 millimeters of armor which means that if you are side scraping if you're coming up against some of those uh, death stars the fe 4005 and the fe 2185 b 183 or any of those tier 10 tank destroyers um, from the german line they're probably going to go straight through the side of you because they have the caliber to do so so don't go side scraping against some of those bad boys because you'll get punished Furthermore, if you do side scrape, don't expose too much because what happens is you see this unangled, well, this very angled frontal plate of the tank, which is very flat. Um, well, not flat, but almost flat to the tank. That really well angled pike nose almost. Um, yeah, the blue plates to the left and right of the main hull. Yeah, you'll see that those can actually get penned if you do try and angle. So make sure you're wiggling if you're coming up against an opponent because it will make it a lot harder for them to be able to reliably pen you. So, yeah, given that we've looked over the statistics, it's time to take this thing out for a battle. I'm going to be playing live. I have no idea if we're going to have a fantastic game or whether it will be another bog horror uh, travesty. But, yeah, let's get into that and hopefully it will be a nice video for you guys to watch and see whether... I fail my way or win my way to victory. So, of course, being a brand new tank, we're going to get into the, quite possibly, one of the worst matchups that we could possibly get, um, being that we're in a tier 10 matchup, which is, yeah, definitely not something that I enjoy when I'm playing in tanks like this because your armor basically means absolutely nothing at tiers two tier higher than you. So, yeah, make sure that when you are firing, you're making those shots count and. Considering that I guess we haven't got the worst map for our tank because we can use the gun depression that this tank gets and believe me the gun depression on this thing is fantastic because you're so low profile it's like playing an FV4202 if you've ever played that because of the hull and the sh shallow hull shape you can actually crest ridge lines very easily and you can get some uh, shots where other tanks would have really failed or tried very hard uh, to try and get but you can do it very easily so think about that when you're going in and when you're progressing into the variety of different tanks that you can do in this one so of course at the beginning we have picked up a nice bit of assistance damage 417 we've got to be a little bit careful of artillery which is of course the bane of my existence when trying to record live uh, because of that kind of high alpha that they do have and of course I don't know if they try and focus or not but for some reason always seems to happen and whilst we're talking about that we did manage to pump a shot high rolling into that VK which is always nice and because you can high roll pretty nicely in this thing 480 alpha damage that's always a, uh, a nice result when you uh, do manage to finally hit someone so, knowing that we did have the Gorilla over on the right hand side, and knowing that the Sturm Tiger P is up there, we need to make sure that we're making our hits count, and so we're going to get into a position to do so, and to cover our team should they be attacked from any other side other than straight in front. Now, granted that the Object 752 is over there, and that we are spotted, I think it's time we pull back a little bit. Uh, to be able to gain a little bit of ground and to make sure that we aren't going to be getting hit by any of those high alpha TDs because if you do, it's going to be very painful for this tank. Now, Tiger P, 
Let's fully aim. Hopefully we can pull a shot off into him when he reverses, um, which we don't manage to do, unfortunately. And so we're going to have to just re retreat a slight bit back. So now we can use this ridge line and we can basically now just crest over to deal damage to opponents that we may or may not be able to hit. Of course, taking out the Tiger two there who for some reason crested the ridge once again when he'd just been spotted and taken shots at so don't quite know what he was doing uh, but we won't berate him too much anyway moving forward in this game we do have to go on the aggressive um, or the aggression whatever you want to call it i'm butchering it now um, but yeah we need to go on the offensive because um, we are in a bit of a pickle should we not manage to pen this stern tiger there and we are now um, pushing up onto this ridge line over here. You can see the top speed of the tank coming off quite nicely, actually. We're able to get up to that top speed of um, uh, 50 kilometers an hour very easily there. It wasn't actually a chore, which is like what some tanks are within this game, is actually, although they do have high top speeds, they're not always um, actually <laughs> able to get up to them. Things like the IS-7 are probably a good example of that. Uh, being that, yeah, you barely ever get up to that top speed that they always uh, rave on about. Now, we take one shot there from the VK, which is unfortunate because he manages to Amorak us in the first shot we've taken. Wouldn't be a British tank being amorak in the first shot. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, I guess it's just a, a meme at this point in terms of uh, being a British tank uh, in World of Tanks anyway. <laughs> Now what you'll see here, the one problem that I have noticed is of course the shell velocity of the standard rounds within this tank and that's because they are pretty appalling. You can see how slow they actually reach the target and how annoying that could be if you're coming up against some of those fast light tanks, especially with the standard rounds that this tank gets. Of course that game, not particularly a very interesting one, um, but hopefully the next live gameplay will be able to showcase a little bit more of what the tank can do maybe potentially in a matchup that isn't tier 10 because this probably isn't the best suited tier 10 tank um, at tier 8 to kind of play against because it doesn't have the penetration to reliably go through the opponents that you'd be coming up against at tier 10. So. Bear that in mind if you ever think about purchasing this tank or if you're interested in what it is and how it's going to play. Uh, if you ever want to potentially maybe pick it up as part of a bundle, maybe it comes out as the Halloween urn op, I don't know. But if you want to try this tank out, make sure you do think about that before you purchase or go towards it in any way, shape or form. Of course, we can't actually finish the video without kind of talking about the looks of the tank. I think it is a fantastically looking tank. Yes, it is one of those that is kind of controversial because it's not historically accurate. Let's look at it. it no tank was ever designed actually like this. Uh, it is a Halloween tank, and so, yeah, it's representative of that. A lot of people berate Wargaming for creating tanks like this, but to be honest with you... Um, I think it comes to a point where they start doing a lot of the tanks within history so it comes to a limiting factor where you know if they want to produce more World War II tanks like everyone keeps raving on about they do have to kind of use their imagination a little bit. What I don't like is when they literally just reskin a tank, give it some different colours and then call it a brand new tank. Um, yes, yeah, it's not though is it Wargaming? Um, but this one is certainly not one like that although it can be closely linked to, of course, um, the other um, British medium tank at this tier, which is, of course, the... Um, oh, what's it called? I think it's a heavy, actually, um, that has the 440 Alpha as well. So think of that if you're ever going to want to play this tank. It is pretty much like that heavy tank. I, although I can't remember it, I'm sure someone in the comment section will be able to correct me um, from being a bot. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward within this game... Of course, what we need to do is make sure that the Pantera here doesn't manage to get a sneaky shot into us whilst we're trying to take him out. We're getting lag again. It's been a recurring theme for the last couple of videos. And every time I try and record, it seems to be buggy and horrible and lag switchy and, yeah, just pain in the arse. But anyway, <laughs> regardless of that situation, let's not blame it on the lag for being bad. Um, but yeah, we'll move forward and try and get some damage on this Pantera here because if we can get one into him, which we do manage to, um, we can then progress at least on one of the flanks. Uh, we've got a heavy tank that's behind us, 
a little bit annoying because we're trying to just pull back and then uh, change direction. Uh, if we can get a shot on this pa the Pantera here, we'll just line up one. Um, we managed to bounce, unfortunately, which is annoying. But now it's time to just turn around and take a full-on frontal assault against some of the terrible tanks on the enemy team, being that AMX CDC, which I do feel bad for him having to play that awful tank. And trust me, the CDC, you think some of the tanks that you play is bad? Well, the CDC crops that biscuit. And it genuinely is one of the worst tanks I've, I've played in a long, long time in terms of the current meta within World of Tanks. Don't get me wrong, yes, you can have good games, but that could be said for every single tank within the game. The CDC just isn't one of those. Um, although it has good DPM, that's about it in terms of how well it can play. And although I would love to say that the tank is fantastic having three marked it, it just isn't. Anyway. Enough of crapping on the CDC, let's move forward and, and try and progress in this game for ourselves and to try and not be a bot and have an actual decent game to showcase what this tank can do. You know, we've only penned three shots and we've got 1200 damage, which is something a lot of these tier 8s can't actually say unless you're playing in a defender or something of that kin. Now, of course, with this tank, you have to make sure that you aren't taking unnecessary hits because 1,400 hit points, although being pretty decent and average for a medium, um, yeah, you can quickly lose that hit points very, very easily. And so think of that whenever you're playing in it, and then you'll be dealing a hell of a lot more um, damage combined. Now, one thing that I do hate about playing in lag is, of course, when <laughs> you're trying to aim at opponents that you're going to be um, trying to get damage on, um, especially when you should probably be able to deal a lot more damage to someone, but because of the lag, yeah, you don't manage to. <laughs> oh my god, we're having an absolute nightmare field day. Um, but yeah, let's try and get one more into this guy before he gets taken out, and then we can progress on that other medium tank, uh, who for some reason he's deciding to go for me. Uh, don't really blame him, probably an easy pen, um, but what we will do is try and go after that Leopard PTA, managed to track him, and we'll finish him off there for that final bit of damage. We picked up 2,200, not an awful game, but hopefully we can get one more shot off to make it a game where we actually earn a little bit of money, rather than the paltry amounts that you see within uh, World War II now. Uh, and you can see, luckily, because we are a pretty fast boy, we can actually get up to that top speed of 40, uh, well, 50 kilometers an hour. And maybe, just maybe, if we get a little bit lucky, never mind. Um, we'll have to go for the Oho, and we managed to bounce because of the low penetration of the standard rounds. Probably would have penned if we <laughs> loaded premium, but then again, I wanted to earn some money. Anyway, the Chimera, having played two on the bounce, yeah, it seems like a very nice tank. We got a little bit unlucky with the matchups. Got a little bit unlucky that we didn't really have much stiff competition in either of those matchups to be able to really grind it out and test out the wit and the amount of strength that the tank actually has. But I definitely think, having played a couple of battles in this thing, that it is one of the stronger monster tanks within the game. And certainly the 440 alpha damage packs that punch against some of the opponents that you'll be facing. So there we go, the Inferno Chimera, or the Chimera, um, as the unskinned version is. Yeah, a really, really nice tank that I definitely would recommend if you do go for that Monster Hunter earn up, and it is a part of that next year, which is, of course, will be when it is next available for free. Um, or essentially, if you want to purchase it during the year, it's going to cost you, uh, I think, in the region of about 8,000 gold. So yeah, look out for that if you want this tank. Let me know. And if you do already own it, let me know what you think of it. Do you think it's okay? Do you agree with my opinion? Does its armor profile really work? Um, my opinion? No, not really. But definitely the turret is somewhere that people don't want to shoot. But then again, they'll just hit your hull armor for the 90% of the time. So there we go. Anyway. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you want to check out other reviewed videos and if you want to check out that part of this gifted tank series that we're doing, uh, just a four-parter uh, looking at the bog horror and the other tanks as part of this bundle, then of course uh, you can view that on screen right now. Hopefully you have a great rest of your day and I hope you join me back in the next video where we showcase another premium tank or another way of earning some silver or something within the game. Thank you. Goodbye.